right hi guys let's talk about glucagon tolerance test in glycogen storage disorders so what happens if we give glucagon injection in glycogen storage disorders in case of overnight fasting if the patient is fasted for overnight okay then if the disease is one Kirk's disease that is type 1 glycogen storage disorder and Cori's disease that is type 3 glycogen st uh, storage disorder versus all other GSTs. If we give injection glucagon in all other GSTs, so what will happen is there will be normal rise in blood glucose level. But in case of one Kirk's disease and Cori's disease, in case of overnight fasting, after giving injection glucagon, there will be little to no rise in the blood glucose level. So now we have differentiated uh, one Kirk's disease and Cori's disease from all other GSTs on based on overnight fasting and giving injection glucagon. Now we have to talk about one Kirk's disease versus Cori's disease. So what happens in case of patient had a meal two hours before the test okay two hours postprandial so what happens in von Kirk's disease versus Cori's disease we'll talk about this in Cori's disease after injection glucagon okay there will be normal rise in blood glucose level after two hour postprandial uh, in Cori's disease after giving injection glucagon there will be a normal rise in blood glucose level but in case of von Kirk's disease after giving injection glucagon in a two hour postprandial patient there will be little to no rise in blood glucose level thank you